All right, today I have for you Volcanic Fissure of Snicking with Shockwave stacking a bunch of charges. I'm pairing that up with a Nebulock with a 12% chance to fortify. This is giving me physical damage, armor, and I take fire damage over time, and I reduce elemental damage taken from hits for each endurance charge, and I have 13. Normally, this mace is pretty shit, but with 13 endurance charges, it's actually not so bad for a skill that doesn't need a lot of attack speed. If you need a lot of attack speed, this mace is pretty trash, but I don't really need that much attack speed. So the downside of the slow attack speed and the downside of the crit have been mitigated. The downside of the crit has been mitigated by the fact that I am a slayer grabbing this bad boy, which is making the base crit chance for my weapon 8% and giving me some crit multi and also reducing the amount of crit the enemies do on me. I am pairing that with this very expensive ring, about 300 divines for this bad boy, which I think at the end of this video I'm gonna get rid of all of my expensive gear, which is mostly just this ring and the progenesis, and I'll replace them with cheaper gear to make a cheap variant. Now this crown of eyes with a power charge is usually pretty cheap, but this league it's actually kind of expensive, and that's just because the market has been flooded with divines. And since it's been flooded with divines, this bad boy is expensive. So if you want to use this with the plus one to power charge, which I do recommend, you're probably going to want to buy a bunch and corrupt it yourself and get that power charge. You'll probably get it for much cheaper than eight divine because this is like a 5C item unless you put the power charge on it. Let's just remove the power charge and just see what we got going on. 3C, if you want to get a high energy shield like mine, 5C. And uh, that's pretty nice. Everything here we need except for the negative 30 fire resistance. Obviously, we don't need negative 30 fire resistance, but accuracy is good. Energy shield is great. The combo of the double leech is fantastic. And the spell damage also applies to attacks at 150% of the value is fantastic because we have this bad boy here, which is giving us 7% increased spell damage per power charge. And we have 13 also getting 7% increased physical and elementals. We're getting a lot of overlap, a lot of damage scaling here. From this one pair of gloves also relatively cheap um you don't need the frenzy charge i do recommend getting a little bit of crit here but here as a slayer you're not really needed i just happen to have the cash so you know an extra little bit to get that bad boy these boots are really cheap i have an expensive pair with spell suppress but you don't need spell suppression for this build these guy i think it's like a 1c item i have it really highly rolled for the energy shield so I got a new mouse here, so you have to pardon my misclicks. I decided to try one of those 12 keys on the thumb mice from uh, Corsair, and so far it's trash. It's just not very comfortable. I don't need all those buttons, and I kind of mishit all the buttons. Uh, waste of $40, but I did feel it necessary to try it out. Now, we are wasting everyone's time by talking about nonsense using this bad boy because it gives plus one of power charges but the affliction charges or the absorption charges are actually really nice for regenerating my energy shield now my energy shield needs constant regeneration because i take 200 fire damage per second per endurance charge and i have 13 endurance charges so that's 2600 fire damage per second if i've been hit recently that is a lot of fire damage but that is being mitigated by the body armor, which gives me 123 life regeneration per second per endurance charge and 6% movement speed per frenzy charge. That combos twice. Combos with the boots that don't have any movement speed on them, so you're getting 6% increased movement speed per frenzy charge, which offsets the movement speed penalty of using these boots. So as you see, I'm quite quick for having boots with no movement speed. Um, and if I pop on my automation support, which is going to be that button and that button, it's even faster because it's constantly casting phase run. It's kind of a waste to constantly cast phase run because whenever I get frenzy charges, the phase run lasts like 20 seconds. But I don't even care because I don't have to cast it manually. It's really nice. Now over here, I have a call of arms with battle mages cry. I don't have anything to pump up the war cries. But when I am fighting a boss, I get a pretty big buff. I get a lot of power when I'm fighting a boss. And then this will trigger Frost Bomb, which I'm only throwing in there to give the enemy 75% reduced life regeneration rate. 
If I wasn't using the automation with phase run, I could use discharge in here, which actually does do quite a bit of damage. And it will be discharging endurance charges and frenzy charges. Not so much power because I don't have power. But I'm not sure how this interaction works. I haven't done a discharge build since they modified these boots. I don't think it, I think discharge only does damage if it can remove them. So the fact that I have elim eliminated power charges removes the synergy from discharge. But if you wanted to use the triple damage um, belt, I forget what it's called, the red belt that does triple damage, instead of endurance charges, you're gonna be much less tanky, but you can then use discharge because you're gonna be getting a lot of power charges, but you won't be getting a lot of endurance charges. Your endurance charges and your fringy charges, they don't stack fast enough for discharge to be useful inside of this little combo. So I'm just doing Frost Bomb, which auto casts whenever I exert an attack. Uh, Herald of Thunder, Herald of Purity, uh, Assassin Mark on hit. We have Discipline, Herald of Ash, Enlighten, Herald of Ice. So we have a five, four Herald situation with Discipline. This guy gives me plus one to power charge, which is the main reason I'm using it, but the absorption charges are nice. And obviously Badge of the Brotherhood. That is the gear I am rocking. Now let's look at my inventory. Uh, player, P button. This guy gives me the 50% chance to avoid shocks, which synergizes with this guy, and uh, he's somewhere. He, he's somewhere. I got the thing that makes it so I don't um, take any elemental ailments. Right at 100%. You get 50% on one of these, then you grab these right here, and you are good to go. That's all you need. It's a pretty nice little combo, pretty nice little setup uh, to get that. Now, if you have a little more socket availability, you can do that in a different fashion. But either way, that's fine. My main weakness right now is Chaos Resistance. I don't have a lot of Chaos Resistance, so I can get hit pretty good with Chaos Resistance. But with this guy up, it's not so bad. 62, I need to pump that up a little bit. Swinging over here, we have this guy. What price are you running? Nine divines, it looks like. Um, let's get rid of that. Five divines. Uh, if you want to go cheap variant, you probably can just get rid of this. Uh, using discipline is kind of a dead node. It's nice. It does give me a lot of energy shield. It goes from 1500 to 1900. But it's really not needed. I'm only doing it because it adds to a little bit of the meme factor. And I like the memes. Getting 13 charges is just way more impressive than getting 12. Am I right? Yes, I'm definitely right. Okay. This guy I've been using on all of my builds. I bought it at the very beginning. It is so powerful. We have 20 elemental damage, 20 elemental damage, 20 elemental damage, 20 cold res, and... 5% global accuracy. Now, the global accuracy is not really that important with this build, at least the way I'm running it, because I'm doing uh, Worthy Foe. doesn't say what Worthy Foe does, but what Worthy Foe does is enemies I intimidate take 20% more damage, or take 20% increased damage, which does mean 20% more damage, and enemies I intimidate cannot dodge my attacks, and I am only timid intimidating with Battle Mage's Cry, which does not proc that frequently. Uh, 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 right here. So it procs pretty slow. So that's mostly good for bosses. My accuracy is extremely low, but that's really not that important. Um, any hard enemies will get uh, war cried on, and then they'll get intimidated, and then they can't dodge my attacks, and any weak enemy will die almost instantly. So this guy's giving me the Corrupted Blood, some Chaos Resistance, Flask Duration, uh, Strength and in. I think I'm mostly using it. Yep, I need that extra strength because Nebulok is a beast. 212 strength requirement, which is a bit annoying. It's one of the main reasons I'm pathing over here to grab this strength node. These crit nodes are really nice as well, so it's just kind of nice to dip down that way. Getting a little hybrid life and energy shield as well. But for maximum efficiency, if you could figure out a way to get more strength and just path over the top, you'd be much better off and just not grab these three nodes here. Or you can grab this node here if you can uh, finagle it because these are pretty strong. Getting 25 fire, 25 cold, pretty strong. I don't really care too much about the minus five to all elemental resistances. 
it's really not that important to me because I'm grabbing this node here, which has 25% chance to treat enemy monster elemental resistances values as inverted. So that's just going to invert the resistance every fourth hit, which is pretty nice. This guy's giving me 8% increased damage, which is only 40% increased damage. If I wanted to, you know, refund a skill, this would be the first one I refund. These guys are pretty nice because I'm using four heralds, so this reduces the efficiency. I mean, increases the efficiency, and this increases damage. And then there's the other one of those. Pretty basic. On these guys, I'm grabbing a couple of 5% increased herald buffs on me. I got three of those because I don't need that int. And I got a bunch of these increased flash durations because that's really nice for my build because these flasks are very important. Uh, I think that is it. There's nothing too special about the cluster jewel. Uh, it's an expensive cluster jewel because of the strength, but I rolled it myself, so you know, I'll probably put a cheaper one on uh, whenever I try to make a cheap variant. That's the build. Grabbing this guy so all of the endurance charges get pumped up from the frenzy charges, which then get pumped up from the power charges because of Badger Brotherhood. For this note, I'm not exactly sure this is the right choice. It's given me 10% reduced damage taken while leeching, which is the main reason I'm grabbing it. But I don't think I'm going to be leeching that much. So I think I'm just going to refund it right now. I can either choose... Uh, no, life leech effects are not removed when unreserved life is filled. Okay, that's fine. It's a constant 10% reduced damage taken. That's pretty good. The maximum recovery, that's pointless for this build. I have so much life regeneration. It's pointless. Might be better to do this guy for the accuracy, but the only reason I don't is to deal up to 15% more melee damage to enemies based on proximity. Most of the time, I'm really far away from the enemies. That's not going to be that great, but the increased area of effect per enemy killed up to 50% is pretty nice. That would make for some good mapping. Either way, you can, can kind of give or take which one you want. I'm going to go for the 10% reduced damage just because that's really hot. It's universal. It's global. I just put this on. I've never used this flask before. Uh, chaos damage taken does not bypass energy shield. Remove all but one life on use. Remove life is regenerated as energy shield over two seconds. So that is giving me a ton of regeneration. Let's try to find my regeneration that we got going on here. Energy shield regeneration is 927. And life regeneration is 1600. So I am regening all over the place. Now, I think this flask is going to get me killed. I think it's going to get me killed. Let's find out. Let's just run a map. Think this is a thick boy? No. I thought I had a thick... Oh, there's a thick boy. Look at that thick boy. 40% increased pack size. Is there anything dangerous in there? Cannot leech. That's a little... That's going to hurt my mana. I should be fine with not being able to leech. It's going to be a little awkward, but we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Trying out that uh, 10 key mouse, so it's gonna be a little wonky. It takes a while to get used to a new mouse. I would just stop using it immediately because I don't like it, but I want to give it a fair shake. Uh, this build is really fun to play because you can just kind of smash the ground and then run around. You don't gotta aim at anything. It's not really a melee build. And it's pretending this extra chaos damage is gonna be real rough for me, but it don't matter got the chaos. I've been doing chaos farming now. Uh, for a while, one divine orb was 100 chaos. Now it's 130 chaos, but I've been farming chaos for quite a bit. I got up to like a thousand chaos, which I converted to divines uh, pretty, pretty quickly. I think I got a thousand chaos in like three, four hours or something like that. Playing non-stop with this uh, mechanic. Ah, might have been more than that. I, I can't remember. I wasn't paying attention. I was on that Zah. And it's just good at kind of all the content. I can't really think single target uber bosses would be like the one piece of content you don't really want to do with this. But uh, uber bosses are for the birds. No one likes that shit. That's just not fun. 
For all these, I'm just looking for the word chaos, and then whenever I see chaos, I touch it. Uh, Eldridge, we'll just grab that one. Now there's two, multiple ways you can play this. You can really focus on damage and not focus on survivability as much, and play it from a distance, like this. You can just kind of let the snakey do what the snakey wants to do, right? Or you can do a blink dash strategy, because you have so much cooldown on your frost blink, you can just use your frost blink very aggressively. That's a little too jerky for my taste. It jerks my screen around too much to be blinking everywhere. You blink and then smash, blink and then smash. And I'd have to call the build the Blink Smash build. Um, but for me, I like to just smash run, smash run, smash run, just like so. You smash the ground and then you run. Especially now that I can't leech on this, because that's how I get most of my mana. Doing a single smash and then running around like a chicken. That's the way to go. Though ideally on maps where that has the uh, can't leech, you just want to use multi-strikes and you get three strikes for the cost of a little more than one. And by the time the strike's done striking, you got your, your second attack all good to go. Oh, we got a fat boy, so you see a little bit of single target here. And it's not so bad, it's not so bad for single target, it's not really designed for single target. This jabroni has been uh, war cried on, which means he can't dodge my attacks and he takes 20% more damage. Oh, this boss is trash. I wish I wouldn't have walked in here. I guess my damage is high enough that I kill him fast. Good. It's kind of nerve-wracking using this last, though. Ain't gonna lie. Watching my life go to one multiple times. Man, I am taking some serial damage if I'm not regenerating my energy shield. Another cool thing is just kind of following the snakey. Here, let's just do one attack. Here's one attack. And that was just one attack. You can get big old shock waves on each one if it's timed right. And it's kind of cool. It's four shock waves per attack. Which makes it really good for shock wave. A lot of times your attack speed won't be fast enough to work with shock wave. If you're doing like a really slow slammy build, which is what works best for shock wave. Attack speed is useless for shock wave. So increasing attack speed really isn't going to increase your damage when you're using a shock wave build really excellent because you can just ignore attack speed which is usually a very expensive mod it's also really hard to get makes all your builds feel better but uh if you want to go for something a little on the cheaper side avoiding attack speed is a pretty good way to do that and shockwaves allows you to just completely ignore attack speed for the most part which is really really annoying Drop me oh, this boss is the worst. I mean, I don't know why I'm even waiting. They're not gonna drop me loot. You're not gonna drop me loot. Yeah, it didn't drop me loot. This remix of this song is fucking terrible. It's just, it's just, it's just bad. I got, I have to skip it. It's bothering me. Okay, okay. A lot of times I have no clue what I'm listening to. These are just old uh, games, old music from video games. This one is Shadow Dancer, Secret of the Sonobi bonus stage. It's really good for this content too, because you can preload a lot of your slams and you can stay at a safe distance. So I'm blow you can't tell, but I'm blowing the shit out of these guys. I'm sucking them off left and right. And uh, they can't even see me doing it. Ooh, that was that was close to a death. Oh, this is funky. That was a close to a death as well. 
the timing will definitely get you killed uh, with that flask, no doubt about it. But the gen regenerative uh, abilities are pretty nice. Here, let's take this flask off. Let's just show my uh, energy shield, if you pay attention to my energy shield. It'll stay up if I can get hit with elemental damage because of the absorption charges, but it drains pretty quickly otherwise. And I don't have enough life to not have energy shield. 3,200 life isn't quite enough that I can run around without getting energy shield. See? That's why I decided to throw that flask on. I was doing energy shield leech, and even that wasn't quite recharging fast enough. So I threw this flask on, and it's working okay. It's working alright. Alright. Obviously, T16s are easy. So let's get on out of here. And let's do something a little more challenging. Oh, we got a couple of these guys. We'll do a couple of these guys. Invitation. More life? Perfect. I want them to have as much life as possible. So that way it demonstrates the amount of damage I can pl put down with this. It's feeling like maybe 4 million. It's hard to tell. It's really hard to tell. But it's plenty good enough for like non-Uber shit. Might even be good enough for Ubers if you don't mind the weight. So I think you could be pretty tanky and survive pretty well against Ubers. I haven't tried it yet. Kind of just got this guy built out. Been leveling up the Slayer. So I haven't put this to too much testing. That's what we're gonna do today. We to tested it. It's worked real well in the Dell. It's worked real well in T16s, and I did run one T17, um, but the build wasn't fully done, and it was able to complete everything but the boss. I couldn't do the deep T16 boss at the time. The T17 boss at the time, so my resistances were too bad. But I have fixed my resistances. All of them except uh, cold, I think. Let me see, just so I know. Gotta take off my two flask, my three flask here. Uh, no, I have fixed them all. Excellent. I need one more cold, or two more cold, actually. But beyond that, they are mostly fixed, which will mean whenever my flask aren't popped, I won't die. Okay. That was pretty easy. Let's do... I got another hard one in there. Let's do... Let's do the harder one. I don't want to talk... No one wants to talk to you. You coffee maker. Correct. Coffee sucks. More life again. Excellent. Uh, physical damage is chaos. That is probably my weakest node, too. Oh, and they poison. So yeah, it's a pretty weak node. I'm pretty weak against these boys. I didn't activate it. I am surprised. Oh, I must be poisoned. I was like, I am surprised that I am not generating energy shield. But yeah, I must have got poisoned. Then you see, I can just slam the ground. It's a very safe playstyle, which makes it the best melee ever because melee sucks ass, except for when it's not melee. this track either. I'm gonna switch it mid-fight. Oh, <laughs> Sega Genesis Moonwalker. There we go. Beat some ass to MJ. I don't know why I'm running around. I should just stop and attack like a boss. Almost got me. When the flask popped, it almost got me.
a little low on the damage, but I'm gonna do this deathless, so that's pretty good little uh, quality of life. Okay, my mouse keeps going off the screen. I have to change that. Using the new mouse, it's at a different DPI, everything is different. I, I think my my hands are too big. Cause this mouse could be a lot bigger than it is. I mean it's got 12 keys on the side. I feel the mouse should be bigger. Like wider. My pinky has a difficult time resting on the mouse. So it's resting on the mouse pad and my pinky's being dragged around on the mouse pad instead of being on the, the mouse with the claw grip. Alright. So I did that content. Let's go ahead and do a T17. Let's do a T17. Nice and easy. What kind of scarabs do we want on a T17? Um, yeah, let's make rare monsters have additional modifiers. Additional rares. Uh, yeah, let's make them have a chance to be wisped up. And let's put a little more breach in there. Two extra breach portals. Breach portal. Breach, breach, breach. Where's the breach? Breach, breach. Where's the breach? Why can't I not? Oh, it's right here. Kind of weird all by itself there. And let's get some T17. God, they keep giving me Citadel. It's like the worst one. I'll do a ziggurat. I'm going to need some uh, chaos. I'm going to do it in five chaos. I'm only going to give myself 5 chaos. Let's see what we got here. Vulnerability fine. Temple chain's fine. Elemental weakness might be a little rough, but should be fine. Increase damage. Increase attack speed. Cannot regenerate energy shield. Cannot regenerate life. Yeah, that is a brutal roll, and I do not like it. Damn, that's some crit. Impale. Grasping vines on hit. I mean, the cooldown reduction rate is pretty shit. Oh, it's got 110 map size. I'm gonna do my map strategy. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Let's see, 50% increased maps. And we don't need a unique map from the boss. Boom, boom, and boom. Let's go ahead and run this guy as well. Give the, you, the rares some unique modifiers. This is going to be a hard one um, because of the cooldown reduction. My DPS is going to be drastically reduced, but it should be fine. Ooh, extra chaos or We'll put some tattoo on you. God, those are the worst. Like 10 of them. Drop some scarabs, tainted currency, harmless frogs, hell yeah. Rogue exiles, there we go, there we go. We're, we're, we're pumped up, we're ready to go. That tainted currency. I love tainted uh, chromatics. They're my absolute favorite. I do all kinds of uh, corrupted shit. And I do so many builds that having the tainted chromatics is just, it's a goddamn lifesaver for me. My thumb is falling off of the mouse. The other mouse kind of has a little hook and a groove where your thumb can go into, so when you lift up your hand to lift up your mouse, your thumb is a part of the lifting. This doesn't have that. So when you go to lift up your hand to move the mouse, your hand just kind of slips off of the mouse. I'm doing a mouse review right now, guys. Those are nice. Can never have too many of those. 
Okay, let's pay attention to my flask. While mapping, my flasks are definitely up. They are up. If it's up, then it's up, then it's up, then it's up. If it's not up, then it's probably down. Oh shit. My guitar shit is on. Hopefully that didn't fuck up the video. I turned my guitar shit off. I doubt it fucked up the video, but maybe. Could have had some feedback. The consummate professional. So I have my, uh, a mixer over here that has my mic plugged into it, and my guitar plugged into it, and another thing plugged into it. It's handling a lot of different audio shit. And I always play my guitar almost every night, and uh, if I forget to turn it off, it might fuck up the video. I just hit record and go. If I was a uh, less busy man, oh look at these thickies. Oh, those could be thicker. Those could be thicker. If I was a less busy man, I would be able to do, uh, you know, over practice video. But I only have a few hours every night to play. So, uh, well, except for on the weekends. So I can't really spend a lot of my time just fucking testing audio shit. So you guys get worse quality videos. You know what? That's fine. We're all okay with my shitty videos, am I right? Okay, let's uh, talk about multiple ways. You can do the walk and slam, which is a pretty way safe way to fight bosses. You just slam and then walk and then slam and then walk and then slam and then walk. Or you can do slam and dash. I haven't. I think I've only fought this bitch once here. I don't know where. I don't know what she's gonna be doing. Looks safe over here, so I'm just gonna hang out over here where it's safe and just let let my uh, snakeys handle it. Am I being hit? I can't tell. Well, something hit me. And then you can do the blink, attack, blink. You see something coming? You blink. You blink. You blink. But I don't really like to blink that much. So I do the attack and move. Hit the ground and then try to get him in the butt like it's Dark Souls. But the best advice you could probably take is to not take my advice. I died there. Um, I, I wish I had uh, information on how I died. I don't have that matrix. I wasn't paying close enough attention. Did I die because of the potion? Did I not? I probably fucking dashed over that. God damn it. At least not all the enemies are dead. That might have been bad timing. Or I just could have just got hit by something Mondo. Like this dude. This dude's getting big. He getting threatening. Oh, we got a, we got a bossy. And I've been doing Beyond with the new Beyond. Ooh, it's really good. Really good. Because it has so much higher chance to spawn beyond. Um, yeah, it's actually actually spectacular. Uh, it's kind of low on the damage, a little bit. You can also put uh, blood rage or whatever that one is called. Oh. That's what's happening. Look at that fucking latency. I was like, man, shit is feeling weird. And it's because my internet is the fucking worst. Oh my god. Look at that shit. Arizona internet. Real bad. You got one choice. Downloading. What the fuck are you downloading? I don't need you to download anything. You only get one choice. There's only one ISP here, and it's Cox. And their infrastructure is dog shit. Because Phoenix used to be like a million people, and now it's like eight plus. I think it's like the fifth or sixth largest metro. Why did it spawn me in this fucking town? And it's just massive. And they can't handle the internets. 
or it's just my particular house. Don't really want to break my lease just for fast internet or stable. It's plenty fast when it's working, it's just not stable, but I might have to break the lease. I work from home and almost most of my hobbies use the internet in some way. We got some uh, video games and prawn and uh, you know, gotta have that, gotta have the stable internet. Ooh, we got a chaos one. But I'm gonna fight the boss before I grab that. Where'd that boss go? I don't want the boss doing extra chaos damage. I don't want to fight those enemies without getting that chaos node either. Put a portal down like I'm not in a moron. Should have emptied my inventory too. Okay, that. I, I need, really need to pay attention. I can't tell if this is a potion dying or if he's just getting me. by something real hard right there. I don't know what that was. I, maybe I walked into the line? I think it might just be bad synergies with the potions. Potions getting me killed. Maybe that's like, I think there's all kinds of dot on the ground. I can't, God, this game is terrible with his damage over time. I don't know why they don't just get rid of it. Like, was I on damage over time? I, what was hitting me? I couldn't even fucking see what was hitting me. It's kind of annoying. I don't know why, I, I read it. And I, I was like, yep, that's the right choice. It wasn't the right choice. Waste it on the boss. Or complete the map. I think I'll give the boss one more shot. Okay, so those are green poison spikes, and something slowed me down massively. Definitely don't want to be standing there. Okay, he looks like he's throwing shit on the ground that's gonna blow up. Right? Is it? Can't even fucking tell what's going on. It's a good thing my uh, shockwaves are doing all the damage while I don't have to aim. What the hell is this? Oh, All right. okay. I'll take a squire. I'll take a squire at seven percent. I'll divine that shit to perfect. What are, what what are we running? Oh my lord! Oh my god! A squire is one divine this league. A squire is one to fucking divine this league. God damn, the market got fucked. $5 headhunters, one divine squires. Oh my god. Today, this league is the league to build shit with shit that's usually too expensive for your shit. A one divine squire? Holy shit. Wow. That's usually an item that just goes up and up and up in price, not down and down. That is crazy. Crazy. I'm gonna pretend like I'm not part of the problem. Like I didn't abuse the shit out of some of them farming strategies. Actually, some of them I wasn't even abusing. I was getting accidentally. My maps got that uh, chance to get a divine when you kill shit all the time. 
and then I was doing Abyss, and while I was following the Abyss trails, it was just shitting out the vines. It was fucking bonkers. Alright, let's talk about some of uh, the regen. So let's take a look at my defense. And I need to get hit with some elemental damage and look at my energy shield. Regeneration, 1988. If I get hit with some elemental and get some of those absorption charges, which is pretty slick, Red. That is pretty slick. And I think any hit will hit me with elemental damage because I'm converting some of the physical damage that hits me into uh, chaos, into elemental. Cold, specifically. Um, I just need something that will somehow convert chaos into elemental, and then I have a really good sustain on my... Um, energy shield. The song was a little loud. When you're just doing a random internet thing, sometimes the volume of the songs are a little off. Uh, some will be louder, some will be quieter. Obviously I want the song to be louder than my voice so you can listen to the music and send me talk. It's a real benefit to my video quality. Because if you're hearing me talk, then you're just getting dumber, right? And who wants to get dumber? You don't want to drop IQ points. You want those things to go up. Oh, that was a, definitely a potion death. 100% a potion death. I wonder if there's a better way to trigger that potion. I wonder. I, I don't know any of the flask effects. The only flask effects I know is the use when charges are full. I don't know what any of the other ones do, but they might have one that allows it to use when energy shield hits zero. Or I'm just forgetting to put all my auras on. I have a really good Watcher's Eye Jewel that regenerates a ton of energy shield, but I wanted to use that uh, Flesh and Flame Jewel, so I had to drop it. I mean, I guess I can get rid of the other... No, the other one giving me my strength. I am taking some serious damage over time. Look at that regen. I get 1900 energy shield per second. And it's not even going up. Plus 1600 life per second, but it wasn't draining my life. It's just draining my energy shield. I wonder if I could use something to give me Zealot's Oath. I just recharged my energy shield. So my life regeneration will go to the energy shield. I'd have to re- I'd have to get way more energy shield for that because never mind. At least for it to work good. Ooh, chaos orb. You can stack these upright. I've gotten at least an unknown amount of chaos orbs in a single map. Hit like four or five of those chaos ones. Man, there's shit and chaos everywhere. I would try to guess, but I honestly have no clue. It could have been 300 or it could have been 30 and felt like 300, but it definitely felt like 300. I mean, all this damage with a fucking nebula? Who uses rare weapons in the league where, I mean, unique weapons in the league where you can get mere tier rares for 20 divines? 
I do. The hipster doofus. Man, someone is applying some damage back there. I feel like I'm missing a couple of, uh, breaches. I put the breach node in there. I'm also missing a crap ton of maps. These map scarabs. I should be dropping all kinds of maps. This is like my rare map strategy. Map farming strategy it ain't even working. Uh, this build is really good for loot. Really good for loot. Because you can slam on the ground and then pick up all that loot when your shock carries. Right, let's do some shockwave following. I'm going to announce my attacks. Attack. Looks like it doesn't return for a double hit. Yeah, it doesn't do a good job of bouncing back, which does make it pretty bad single target. Sometimes you can get them into an area where it feels like it does it, but I can't tell. It's so hard to see. They don't have an MTX for the volcano thing yet, for a volcanic figure, fissure, volcano fissure, whatever that fucking thing is called, volcanic fissure. I mean, you always need an MTX to be able to see the skills. I mean, you wouldn't even know I was doing Shockwave if I had the base MTX. And you got that visual clarity debuff. When you're really good like me, you need as many debuffs as you can get. You gotta get that visual clarity debuff. Uh, two monsters left. Well, that was a disappointing tier 17. I got a one divine squire. What is that shit? One di divine. Oh, I was supposed to be looking at these maps. Maps are all pretty damn thick when you use the uh, guaranteed to have maximum things. It's kind of nice. Got a bunch of tattoos. All green, too. All the ones I don't already own in there. All right, let us uh, run a little bit more content. Let's go into the Delve. Let's go into the Delve. I don't know how far is far in the Delve, but I think this might be pretty close to the farthest I've ever been. I'm at 505. I don't typically Delve very deep. I go into the Delve early on because the delve will drop a ton of maps that's typically how i get my early map sustain is in the delve so for me it's a really good way to map up and then you also stock up on town portals and identification scrolls So you see I was like picking all that shit up while the shockwaves were doing their boom boom? It's really cool. And I don't know why I find it fun to play this build. I shouldn't. It's essentially the same as like a brand build. It plays like a melee brand build. And I like brands, which is dumb because I shouldn't like brands because I don't really like traps. For whatever reason I like brands. And I usually don't like builds where you're not really feeling your action. You drop a brand, you don't really feel the brand hit. You drop this, you don't really feel it hit unless you're like up front in their face. I typically don't like this kind of playstyle, but I don't know. I really like it. Maybe just because it feels like a melee skill and it hits like a brand. So if you like the tactile feel of a melee slam, but you like the uh, convenience of a brand, it's kind of what you're getting here. Let's look at some of my damage split. Uh, total combined damage, about 300k. We're getting almost an even split between cold and fire, and then a little bit in lightning. I could use Trinity support, probably, um, but I don't know if Trinity support will be better than 
I have to get rid of either the AoE skill, which reduces my attack speed, or um, power charge support. Or endurance charge support. But with uh, 13 charges, that's a lot of damage. Like 52% more damage or something like that. two of those, which is really nice. Uh, actually, let's hold still. Let's see if my flask gets me killed when I hold still. I think I need to run another one. Wait, did I already... Oh, I didn't even click the fucking button. We'll do one more, and I'm gonna hold still at the end. Because that's what this build should do. Ideally, I should use the Grasping Vines and um, Arctic Armor if I wanted to be more tanky, but I'm already pretty tanky. I mean, I'm a bad player, I don't avoid anything, and I've only died really on the T-17 and mostly on the boss. And that's probably because that boss was doing chaos damage, which is my weakest area. Now that I think about it, that's probably exactly what was happening. God damn it, I'm supposed to hold still. Habits are hard to break. Look at this regen. Pretty good regen. I mean, if that blast was gonna kill me, that would be the time for it to do it. That would be the time for it to do it, but that blast seems to be working alright. It's just a bit puckery. It's a bit butt puckery. Alright, let's go to the coast. I think Shaper is a good reference for people or Elder. I'll throw you on the ground. So let's see if I got a Shaper or an Elder. I got a sh Elder. We'll do an Elder. Elder's a little faster. And I think I'll do Red Boss. Just to show the bossing. I wouldn't really recommend this for bossing, but it can do bossing. So I'm going to show it do bossing. Plenty good enough. That is plenty good enough damage. Well, that was a late shockwave. And here it's gonna just be super handy. You stay in one spot, you slam the ground, like ain't no buddy's business. I don't need to move. Just gonna take out them portals. portals, bro. Can I fight now? Let me smash. There we go. Let me smash. Yeah, dude, that's pretty good damage for a build that's this tanky and it's using a unique uh, weapon. That's pretty good damage. That is pretty good damage. And let's see if I got if I got some of the tits. Increase physical damage while using pride. 
Unaffected by conductivity. Well, effect oh, I'm throwing that right there on the ground. You can stay there. Ain't no one gonna buy that shit. I guess I could have hit it with a uh, ball orb, but I don't want to waste a fucking ball orb on that trash. Alright, let's red buff. Do I have any Ubers? I can die embarrassingly on an Uber. Where, where the fuck is that story? Oh, there they are. Nope. God damn it. I thought these were one per boss, but you have to stack like five, and it's so annoying. I think it's a good idea. It is annoying. Mostly that's because my expectations were each one was an Uber. And I was excited when it dropped, and I ran and threw it in my thing, and it's like, nope. Oh yeah, red, red boss. Can't do reflect elemental, buddy. I can't do it. Uh, reduce effect of auras. Fine, 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 fine. Extra physical damage is lightning. That could be rough. I don't know how much physical damage this guy's actually hit me with. This would be a good test for the potions. See how my potions regenerate. You should be getting potions on crit, but I'm not sure that always works. My attack speed's pretty low. So probably not getting that many potions from it, so it might be a wasted no. Twelve percent shock. I really need to find a way to convert that other fifty percent. I mean I guess I just level up. Yeah, the absorption charges seem to be doing good work here. Actually I'm gonna let it hit me. It kills me. Okay, I gotta, I gotta turn off the music for this boss. I learned that last time. The only way I know he's doing that while using this skill is if I hear the music. I should be regenerating a ton. Those absorption charges should be kicking in. What's that? Where's my energy shield regeneration? 722. That, these are broken. Maybe they don't count. Maybe they count as traps, so you don't get the benefit of the absorption charges. But I should have been getting absorption charge benefit there. Where is it? 722. Yeah, it's busted. Maybe it doesn't count as regeneration. That's weird. I don't understand. Oh well. I got a jewel actually. I never get those fucking things. Oh shit, that might be an expensive one. Okay, okay. Damn, damn, damn. Good roll. Oh, that's a dog shit roll. That's a dog shit roll. All right, red boss down. If you play it right, you can easily kill that guy without dying like me a thousand times. But I was mostly checking out these absorption charges. Okay, I'm gonna. I'll I'll explore later. I I think they're broken in some ways in some instances. Because it's supposed to do player recoups twelve percent of elemental damage. That recoup though, that's the that's the wording, huh? Chaos damage does not bypass energy shield during effect. Remove all but one life. Remove life is regenerated as energy shield over two seconds. This 
is weird. Let me pop it. Yeah, that's not counting as regeneration either. But when I run a map, I'll just go to the blood aqueducts. When I'm in the thick of battle, this energy shield recharge goes up, and I'm pretty sure it's when I get hit by elemental damage. No. I think I'm just reading the number above it like an idiot. And my maximum... Oh, these, my eyes are so fucking jacked up. I can't even read which one's which. Which one I'm trying to find. Alright, whatever. Let's try to make this cheap. I can't use my eyes right trying to figure out, like, look at the screen and how much I'm recharging. Let's try to make this cheap. Um, this guy with the one power charge, he is expensive, but you can, you can roll your own. So I'm counting him, right? I'm counting him. This guy is super cheap. This guy is relatively cheap, like 70 chaos or some jazz. Yeah, 70 chaos. We're gonna need a new replica Restless Ward. Let me make sure I don't have one. I got a lot of Restless Wards. I've been using Restless Wards this whole game, but no replicas. Oh shit, before I do this, I better POB. I do this all the time. I mean, obviously I'm gonna go back, but I might as well POB it right now. Path of building. Mommy's a little corpse fucker. So disappointed that I don't get a fuck any corpses. That this whole league, well, the whole graveyard is a complete waste of time. Unless what you care about is getting loot. Really, really, really overpowered and great loot. If that's what you like in this game, I mean, who likes that? Right? Who likes really good loot? I don't think I'm on concentrated ground. Um, let's do mapping first. Actually, I like to watch the number go up. So let's go to my skill. Include that in full DPS so I can watch the number go up. Uh, I have killed. I have chilled. I have ignited. I have shocked. I have not been. Actually, I have been hit. Why not? Not let's leave it. Is enemy blinded? Yes, enemy is blinded. Enemy is taunted. Enemy is burning. They are igniting. They are chilled. They are shocked at about 12%. I don't think they're intimidated. Damn. Fucking Willie's Castle Mega Man. Alright, we are sitting at 4.6 million DPS. And this is without my flask on. Let's pop these flasks. Gaboom, 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 gaboom. 4.9. Now, I have open skill slots in my gear, like this guy. I could easily throw in uh, the totem skill. I am just too slow in the head and too old to ever actually use it. I never remember to use it, so I just don't run it. But let's add that in there. Let's see what happens. I have an empty. Oh, there it is. Vol. Vol. Ancestral War Chief. Yeah, that is fucking huge. That is ridiculous. That is ridiculous, guys. Come on, GGG. You just gotta. You gotta fix it. So because this skill exists, this is holding back all melee skills. All of them. Because they can't really buff melee with this motherfucker looming over the battlefield, giving you 32% more melee type damage, right? Because if they buff melee, then it's going to be overpowered. And then when you complain that you can one-shot bosses, which is what this will enable. So if they just get rid of this ball ancestral war chief nonsense, and then they can buff all the other melee skills and make it feel great for everyone, especially while I like, leveling and shit. 
Um, I don't know what they would turn this into. Just don't make it do 32% more damage. Okay, rant over. Let us make sure that everything is selected in the tree. Sometimes it deselects things like a weirdo. Let's look at some of these numbers. Let's look at some of these numbers. We got uh, effective health pool of almost 100k. Really being limited by this chaos damage. But fizz damage is also a little bit of a limiting factor. But our elemental damage, we are covered. We are good. And this is good physical damage mitigation. And this is okay chaos damage mitigation. These are okay numbers. These are pretty good. Um... Da, da, da. Crit chance is 90%. Also pretty good. Also pretty good. Could go a little higher. Let's see what happens. Oh, I'm not even close to it. Yeah, so getting extra accuracy is not that. Oh, that's all just the crit. What do you do? Boom. Boom. Oh, yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty good. Um, ideally, I'd want to spec into this, like so, and then convert this physical to lightning, and then give it a higher shock value. It's probably going to do about 30 now. See, that's kind of where I want to go next. Well, this lightning to fizz really not that big of a difference. I thought because it would be double dipping, it'd be way more damage than that. Because it double dips here. Oh well. Oh well. I want to see what spell damage does real quick. Let's see what 20, is this 20? Yeah, 20 spell damage does. Ooh, that's pretty good. Let's compare that with 20 physical damage. All right. Oh, yeah, there's 20 here. Oh, that is way better. That spell damage is fire because of the helmet and the battle mages cry. I probably should focus on uh, re-rolling one of these elemental to spell damage. I've never really used the spell damage cluster. I don't know what it has, but I'm sure it can get three spell damage nodes. Anyways, this is... Wait, why am I doing so much damage? What did I forget to remove? Oh, that guy and the shock value let's go back to let's go back to 12 little man let's go back to 12 little man okay that is it configuration import export generate share copy notepad plus plus for the video There we go. And then cheap underneath. So let's get rid of some of this gear. This guy, you're too expensive. You're not too expensive, but you're used with there. Um, all these, all the rest of these are fine. These are all fine, except for you. Let's get a, I mean, even you aren't that expensive, but. Check with the plus one to skill gems, fifteen divine. Yeah, it's it's kind of pricey. It's kind of pricey. So let's just do a regular trade. Let's see, six sockets is what we want, and let's just sort by life regeneration rate. Four percent reduced cold damage. Two divine. You can get a little cheaper than that, right? Two divine. Fifty percent reduced damage from critical strikes and. Jeez. Can we get? A, can we? What's the, What's it to one divine? Twenty-two mana. For a one diviner. Twenty-two mana. I feel I got to get the one diviner, right? Got to do a true cheat build, and it's got six sockets, so I can do experiments with it. Yeah, this is it. God, this new mouse is so weird on my hands.
This is worse than playing a new guitar. I spend all day on my mouse. All right, so we're getting rid of the expensive body armor and we're grabbing the cheap. Let's just use the same skills. None of these are expensive. Let's move these over here so I don't accidentally delete them. And let's see what. Let's uh, first search. Let's hit the search for some regular power charge rings. There's a whole fucking reset button and I never use it. Uh, maximum power charges. And let's hit this on a ring. Hunter Divines is the cheapest maximum power charge ring. Like that. Let's switch it to this. Forty divines is the cheapest one of those, so you're not gonna get the boost in power charges on a budget. That's just no way to do it, so we can't do that. So I already know one of the rings I'm gonna use. The taming prismatic ring. Which one of these do I want to pump up? These are fixed at 30, right? So uh, I guess it would be the elemental resistances. Oh, who am I kidding? We're here for the cheap. I'm not trying to find something good. I'm trying to find something cheap. Twenty-three, fifteen. Yeah, we'll do a fifteen chaoser. Kind of break in the bank on that one. See what our resistances look like. Oh, we are needing fire resistance. So for the next ring, we will grab a ring of fire resistance. Is there any unique rings? I like to use uniques just because they're more simple. Unique rings, PoE. DB. Forty percent of cold damage converted to fire. That could be cool. Because uh, I can then route down and grab the twenty-five percent fire damage, twenty-five percent cold damage. Less attack speed, tr strike skills, retarget. I mean, we can get some pretty good heralds. Increase elemental damage, increase critical strike chance. Cover enemies in ash when you freeze them. Cover enemies in frost when you freeze them. I read that wrong, but whatever. I mean, that's pretty good. Yeah, let's just grab that one. Or 
maybe I already have that one. I don't need to buy it. But I do want to price it out. Oh, shit. Never mind. That's a good ring. That's a good ring. That's a good ring. Yep, there we go. Just grabbed a basic ass ring. This isn't worth anything. And let's uh, give it a shot. Let's start with the T16 now that we're running cheap. I mean... Hold on. I mean, I do kind of have to get rid of this. It's too expensive. So we'll, we'll drop this. We'll drop uh, Enlightened Support. Because that's also expensive. We'll do the level 3 in there. Drop the Discipline. We'll have to use Hatred instead. I think we're good to go. And we can put just a regular jewel in there. Any jewel I got. I already have corrupted blood. But I just need a jewel in there. Now a much much less expensive. Let's do some of these juicy maps. 43% increased pack size. Hot diggity. Damn. much slower without the extra three frenzy charges so it's about half the damage but I'm running it Much less energy shield. Yeah, it works. It's a lot slower, but it's perfectly fine. You throw on uh, that stupid War Cry, not War Cry, uh, War Chief on here. Give you more burst damage for the boss. Also, maybe respec it a little, because, you know, I kind of have it spec for how I had it before.
Hell, an option might just be to get a 12 socketed spell cluster jewel and just run, roll all the high spell damage shit on it. The 35% increased effect. Maybe even path over. Or shit, you might even be able to use the sh Warcry shield. Give you maximum power on your Battle Mage's Cry. You'll lose two charges as well, so that kind of makes it unli unlikely to be worth it. Let's look at some of these defenses as I'm running around. Life regeneration still up to 1400. And then energy shield rege regeneration is 494. This was supposed to be a juicy map. This map was fucking lame. I mean, sure, I kill a lot of stuff off screen, but there wasn't shit in here. Obviously, it can handle T16s just fine. Absolutely no issue. Yeah, it just it's just snaking all up in there. It just snaking all up in there. You throw a snake down and it just goes right in the middle of that pack and it bursts and explodes all over their chest. That's what snakey fucking do. Yeah, this build's fucking great. Yeah, you can get a version of like this running for probably under 10 divine pretty easy. Only reason I say as high as 10 is because of the cluster jewels. Some of the jewels I have are a little pricey. And it might take you a while to get that helmet. Get the power charge on the helmet. You can get rid not get the power charge on the helmet or get a different helmet with the power charge. You're gonna lose quite a bit of damage by not having that extra spell. But it won't be the end of the world. I don't know why I'm clearing the rest of this map out. I forgot I was recording a video. <laughs> Alright, let's run a boss. Do we have another Elder? Elder would be a perfect little side-by-side. Uh, -side. See it with and without. Should have planned this out a little better and made sure I had another Elder. I have another Elder. And we'll need to do a comparison. I'll put timestamps. But, I don't know why I said that at the end of the video. You already know if I put timestamps in it. That was close to a death. Oh, it's not, hit it's not hitting with the mark.
Thank you. Gotta make that money. the burst damage you can get with this between phases. You see all those shock waves go off? Get a hit with like five shock waves in a second. And that is a ton of damage. Because when you look at the DPS uh, on POB, it's doing an average over a long attack span. But if you uh, click the shock wave count up to five, you'll see what your burst damage is. It's really high. Shock wave is fantastic. Like single target long term fighting is its weakest point. But if you do, you can like move around a little bit so you can get some avoidance while maintaining damage, if that makes any sense. It's almost like you have dot damage because of the cooldown. So moving doesn't have such a large penalty. Same thing is true with like unleash. You can move around to charge up your unleash, it, it reduces the debuff of moving. Put the mark on. That was quite a bit slower, probably half as slow, but it got the job done. If you needed to kill Elder, you would kill Elder pretty much without dying. I only died because I wanted to do that. Bye. Alright, yeah, that did cost too much. Alright, let us uh, POB again. Back to the board, back to the board, back to the, back to the, back to the POB board. Richard Cyclone. Richard Cyclone. Let's see what we got here. Include in. DPS. It's already hitting a millies. I don't really need to click these because I have them at all times, but I will anyways. I am fortified. I am leeching. Nearby enemies. There's Tan. I have killed recently. Wait. Yeah. Number of non shock enemies shocked recently. How I get more damage for that? Let's do 10. So much debuff from getting hit. Enemy is blinded. Enemy is taunted. Enemy is burning. They are ignited. They are chill. They are shocked. Uh, let's just go 10%. I'll be getting that from my flask. Number of shocks ignites on enemies. What? That's, I think that might be for my ring. I don't know what that's for, but there should be three, I think. I think they're intimidated. No, I don't know if they're intimidated for my war cry or not. Two point one million deeps on this bad boy. Not that high for the price. Oh, I gotta put my flask on. Not that high for the price, but the gameplay you get with it is extremely good. You're slamming the ground, you're covering the whole damn area, you're not dying a lot. 
It's a pretty damn solid build. Not the fastest, not the strongest, but it's just kind of well balanced across the board. And you get to use a damn Nebulak, right? Who the hell wants to use a Nebulak? Um, I'll go ahead and... Uh, import this. Alright, I, I guess that's, that's it. That's the build. It's pretty damn good. It's pretty damn good.